What is going on everybody and welcome back into Bradley Studios. Who's ready to finalize the 3D ultrasound sculpture that I've been working on for the last few weeks or so. Now if you've been keeping track with this little playlist or series, you know that I did sculpt this not only on TikTok Live some sessions, but also fully on YouTube Live. So all of those are available through my YouTube channel under the YouTube Live tab. I also put that into a 3D ultrasound playlist as well, which also features all of that data in those video sessions consolidated down into a 12 times speed video. So you can always just watch that in a really quicker manner, um, get through that information. Now I used a Monster Maker Monster Clay Medium to sculpt that. Uh, I've already melted that down, which is pretty fun to melt down the uh, monster clay back into the original container. But we've already destroyed that uh, uh, that item. But what I did is I went ahead and made a silicone mold of that. Now, technically, this is a throwaway mold. Yeah, I probably won't keep it, probably won't need it. But I was able to practice my mold making uh, skills with just remnants of, of what I had from another project. Um, so, so I made a silicone mold of that using Smooth On Mold Star 15 Slow. So we did that, uh, and then we casted that out of Plaster of Paris. Very simple, very easy, just water in the plaster, and then you mix it up to your consistency and pour it in. And what we have left here is the actual plaster uh, piece of art here. Now this is uh, the sculpture here, and we're, what I'm planning to do is I'm going to paint this so that's maybe like a, a, maybe a bronze or a gold texture. I don't quite know yet. Um, so I'm going to loop back around to this later on in this video where I'll be painting this in a metallic t a tone of some sort. I'm really liking and thinking about the idea of making it a instead of a blue patina, a pink patina. So we'll see how that goes. So this will be making a return later on in this video. Uh, so, so as of right now, <clears throat> I had also, uh, I went ahead and stained a wood board. Uh, so I bought this wood board uh, and what we'll do is we're gonna start off this video by jumping out into the shed where I stained this. I gave a brief description of what this is, how I did this. Uh, and I had a few options as far as stain that I had available to me. And I decided to go with the very dark stain instead of a white, uh, like a nice, bright gold stain i wanted something dark to contrast off of what we're going to do is uh i'm going to go ahead and we're going to create a nice streaked gold leaf gold glitter pink um paint effect across the middle of the board here uh, and then the actual sculpture will be uh mounted or uh, adhesive adhesive glued <laughs> glued into position right there uh, and then what we'll have, I don't know, I might put it on that side. We'll see. And then, uh, so we'll have that. And then we'll have the ultrasound here, which I think I'm going to do a watercolor of that. I mean, it's a small watercolor painting uh, of the ultrasound right here. And then uh, right here, we're going to actually have a little jar of the confetti that we had collected or had from the gender reveal that we posted online, which is pretty exciting. We're able to involve our other kids in that. So it was very, very fun. So sit back and enjoy. We've already got the board stained and uh, clear coated. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and break out my uh, my easel here. And we're gonna go ahead and get some cool glitter gold leaf paint effects across the board before we start painting onto the actual sculpture itself. So sit back and enjoy as we jump into the workstation here. But before we do that, we're gonna jump into the sh uh, shed outside. I'm gonna give you a description of this board. Let's go to it. I don't know you guys, I'm really liking this dark one here has a special walnut. What do you think, you guys? Dark out here. The sun's starting to go down, go down, but I really want to get this done. So I really decided <coughs> after comparing, sorry for my voice here, guys. I'm not feeling too great, but um, uh, to go with the dark walnut. Now it, it's it is an extremely dark color. But I'm hoping that those those light, vibrant colors, the pink and the and the gold and the bronze. Uh, of the actual art will really help it stand out and that's my goal okay so I'm gonna go ahead and just apply um, the dark walnut over the entire thing and the bark it'll almost cause the bark to look a little bit um, a little bit burnt but I'm hoping that it'll just bring a little bit of richness to it that's what I'm hoping for so we'll see how it turns out I'm going to go ahead and get a layer on this and I'm going to let it sit overnight. Like I said, I'm not feeling too hot, but I need to get some of this done here so I can get this project off my list. Um, 
um, I'm trying to clean up my workstation inside as far as get every single project that I have unfinished done. Uh, easier said than done as an artist, you know, <laughs> but we'll do what we can. So um, I'm just using a very wide, thick brush here, is what, two, three inch brush. And uh, we're just gonna go ahead and throw it on and we get what we get. It's gonna look great. I just didn't, I was really thinking about going with the lighter color, but it just wasn't meeting my expectations in my head, so we're going to switch it up, get some, get some dark uh, stain on the end there. Hope you all are having an amazing night. Now the end of the wood, the, the end of the wood grain really doesn't like to absorb that. <clears throat> and what I'll do is I'll give this probably about maybe five to ten minutes and then I'm going to wipe it off. So uh, we're not going to let this color stay here. Um, we're going to wipe it off and, and uh, it'll, it'll lighten it a little bit. Again, this is for the potato baby, so I really enjoyed being able to make that out of the monster clay. Let me get that on there. There we go. Nice, nice, nice. Looking good. I just want to make sure I get good absorption on the end there. Which there's no obvious basswood white showing through. There we go. All right, so it's a very nice deep color. Now, when I take this inside, I'll, I'll be able to show you the true colors of that. Um, again, I apologize. I'll try to brighten it on the actual video, but it, obviously the, the content itself is going to be pretty dark. So um, just hang tight. I'll give you a, a look at what it really will look like when we get it inside the house. Um, we are going to do a clear coat over, over this before we do any acrylics. And then I'll do one more clear coat over the acrylic paint that we put on it before we put any of our little uh, knickknacks and um, soon idea um, soon uh, idea that I had of doing the uh, color pixel or maybe a, uh, a graphite picture of the ultrasound here and then possibly the sculpture here and then the little jar of the. Um, of the confetti. Man, my head feels so cloudy, guys. I'm sorry. Um, anyway, so this is going to go and sit here uh, for the rest of the night. Um, I've wiped most of that um, color off there so it's not dying it so much more uh, than it was before. Uh, and we're just going to let it sit there. And then tomorrow I'll do the other side. <coughs> the other side before I move on to clear coat, which will be both tomorrow. All right, guys. I will catch you later on in the series. Or in, for your case, like of an eye. All right, you guys, so I'm shifting around here. Now, uh, I've got the board here ready to go, but I'm gonna start applying the glitter to it. So, uh, I don't really know where I wanna go with this. I really don't think I want any purples introduced into this, this painting with glitters or with foils. If I do, I think I'll in in introduce the acrylics into that. So what I'm thinking about doing is I'm thinking about doing a base of glitter and then I'll do an assortment of paints over those gl those glitters. So the glitters could change color in some ways. It is a girl that we're having and I do want to keep it, although it's my style of art and just supposed to be fun, something just you know challenging here in the studio for me to do and make make something out of that sculpture 
I really do want to introduce the gold for sure. Gold is a guarantee. So I, th I think I'm going to introduce gold. I may introduce another brown as well. I was thinking about that idea. Maybe it was like an actual brown. I do have a brown from Glitter Champ. So I'll think about that. <clears throat> but the gold is definitely going to go on first. And then I'm going to decide. I'm really going to think about this for a little bit, guys, before I like jump back into this project. Um, I have a few different colors of pink here. Now. <laughs> and I say a few. These are just a few of the ones that I have. Um, I have Sweet Pea from Glitter Champ. I have like a an eraser color. It's very light pink. Very nice. Um, I have uh, an eraser, which is more of a, of a bright pink kind of a dull color pink it's got some silver flakes it looks like or some pearlescence into it maybe uh it's very pretty uh, I, I have used this under epoxy before and it did change the color but i'm not using epoxy for this project um i also have halt halt from glitter temp uh it's very vibrant very pretty um uh, i'm gonna do my best not to, to edit any of the color tone for this portion of the video um as long as it doesn't distort these colors i also have a thicker um type of uh like you know like a, it's a medium chunky um and this is just a walmart version uh walmart or michael's i can't remember um and this one's pink party so um i don't know if i'm gonna use any of this that's, that's pretty bright uh, but it's so nice it's a nice consistency i really think i might introduce that uh i'll look for and see if i have any more chunky uh pinks that I could introduce into this or if I do want to introduce a purple of any way then I'll, then I'll think about that and then I have this one here this is a cherry blossom uh, it is a Walmart or Michaels version as well and it's very similar to eraser see very similar this one's a little bit darker um, but it's uh, very very similar in a lot of ways so we'll go ahead and set this one away put that one away for now um, and then this is the color palette that I have as of right now to introduce the glitter. Um, give me a few minutes and we'll think about whether I want to introduce any more. I'll look through my purples real quick. So I went through my colors again and I pulled a few extras out here. I may not use them all. I have a brownie from Glitter Champ. It's just a very dark brown, like a coffee brown color. Um, I think I actually have one that's called coffee as well, but uh, I didn't look for it. Anyways, I think that this dark color really uh, contrasts well against the gold. And I think that I might use the brownie in just slight areas here and there just to give this some accent or some dark tones around the edges of this. Kind of like a geode, like side by side effect. So I think I might introduce a little bit of brownie into that. Now these are a lot of glitters here. And as far as purples and, and blues, I do have Grape Ape from Glitter Champ. Uh, it is a very dark um, purple chunky. It's very nice. I think that that might be a good additive into that, that lineup maybe. And then I also have Pegasus, which is a high contender in this. Um, it's very pink and purpley and bluish, and it's got like just a nice shimmer to it. Um, I, I really do like this one as well. Uh, and then I, I pulled out Tears of My Enemy. I just think that this one's a little bit too icy for the project that we have here. So although I love this color from Glitter Chip, I think it's a little bit too dark. So we'll go ahead and... Um, uh, a little bit too blue, I'm sorry. So we'll go ahead and put this one off to the side and put it back away. <clears throat> so so in the previous section of this video, you saw that I had collected the um, the confetti from the, from the, thing, from the uh, gender reveal. So we're introducing gold, we're gonna introduce the brown, uh, and then I really gotta consider the colors that I want to bring along with this for the background. And a lot of these glitters will not be visible fully through that acrylic that I do over this. Whether, whether I use uh, pure acrylics or some color shifting acrylics, I don't know, quite know yet. I'm just letting this project lead me as I go. But what I think I'm going to really lean into, I'm really thinking I want to introduce Great Bape, okay? At least a little bit of it. So we'll introduce Great Bape. Um, and I think Pegasus is just a little bit too popply. Poppy? Pop? Um, and that one is from Radioactive Glitter, by the way. Um, all great companies. I think I'm going to set this one off to the side. I just think that it really is too pop for this project. I'm really wanting to lean in toward the metallics. Um, so I think that this sweet pea is too light. I don't know, it might not be too light. 
I mean that that that's a generic pink right there and it's very very light I kind of I think well any of the paints that I put over will really seep into this and change the color I think I'm gonna set that off to the side so it leaves us with um, the chunky I do think I'm gonna introduce a little bit of this chunky in so we'll keep that in the lineup um, and then what we'll do is how about let's uh, put uh, let's put eraser away. I just don't want the color shifting in that and it darkens it I think under epoxy slightly uh, And then what we'll do is we'll use halt and Sweet pea together maybe that line up So what do you think with that and then we'll use the brown and the gold together um, To darken now, of course, we're going to go over this with acrylics later, and uh, we'll pull off the acrylics after I get the, the glitter on here. We're not going to do a whole lot of this. It's going to be around, like, edges and, and just kind of, like, places where the, the paint's going to, like, cover it, and it's, this is going to peek through those paint layers. Uh, that's the same thing for the gold leaf. I want those to pop out. So these are just going to be light layers in particular areas. The chunky will be kind of, like, the outskirts of particular areas or, like, accents. Um, and of course some of this will get covered up by the sculpture uh, and the ultrasound, but that is completely okay That's part of the project and that's just part of the fun is actually creating a nice fun background. So uh, um, I know that's kind of a long segment here But what we'll do is we'll go ahead and get some Mod Podge out We'll go ahead and get these layered in into over the gold leaf and then we'll be able to roll into the painting portion of the board So sit back and enjoy Inside my palms, play with me like cats and a string. You don't understand the pain it brings. You don't ever wanna give me wings. You don't ever wanna set me free. You know I'm addicted to you, and it's twisted. You've been gifted with the evil voodoo. Got me coming back for more, even when I've been screwed. Dolls full of pins, pierce my heart straight through. I got issues in my head. I like you in my bed, but you keep me on red. Oh. Everything is like a test I better not text or I'll come off desperate But if I lay down and I play dead And I stay dead Baby, you'll get sick of being the monster Out of my head, under my bed Think of something out of my Dead. Will you regret everything that you did, that you said? I don't think you understand what you're doing And my heart's black and blue from the bruising I feel like when I'm with you I'm losing I feel like you think that this amusing Sitting there gaslighting and confusing Was it me? Is it me? Am I deluded? I'm the one who's always sorry, the conclusion Even though I offer all of the solutions I wish you loved me like I love you, it's stupid When I'm alone with you, I never feel lucid I wish I wasn't struck by Cupid I wish when I first saw you, I knew this When I'm with you, I feel so useless I feel diluted, my heart's been wounded all right, you guys, so that's what the glitter pretty much finished up there. We're going to jump into the next part of the build, and that is creating and painting uh, the ultrasound here. Now, this is the 3D ultrasound. This is before I had melted it down. So, yes, that's a clip from before that I saved for this video in the assembly. Uh, but this is more so just focusing on the assembly of the build. I do want to give some highlights here and there of the overall processes. And yes, the next process is us painting this. Now, I casted this out of the silicone mold that we had made. So just so you know, we uh, did create this out of Monster Clay from Monster Makers Inc. Uh, it is a wonderful clay if you haven't been able to use Monster Clay definitely make sure you go do so it is an amazing clay to work with 
Once the actual sculpture was completed, I went ahead and made a, a silicone mold of that. Uh, it was just a single throwaway mold, but it was very fun to be able to kind of uh, uh, just practice mold making. Uh, and we used Smooth on Mold Star uh, Slow 15 for that. So it's a, it's a little bit of a lighter color. It's a little bit of, more of a soft type of silicone mold. Uh, and it is really a great product. I really never have any complaints out of Smooth on products. Uh, and I really do like their products for casting and mold making. Once we're uh, done with applying a, um, a layer of Mars Black to this uh, plaster of Paris cast that we had made, I went ahead and started to introduce more folk art bronzes, golds, and a little bit of uh, pink rose from Windsor & Newton. I do also in incorporate some metallic pinks from uh, folk art as well before we start to introduce more of some inks. Now, I use these inks just to give it a really nice, like, dark, nasty, deteriorated wash. Uh, and that's really what gives it that patina look if you apply a lot of different layers of that wash. If I recall correctly, this is a Dollar and Rowney ink, and I'm using majority of sepia here. It's very beautiful and when it dries out it gives it a nice dinged out look now that pink patina right there is just a little bit of uh, uh faded and that is really exactly how i want it to be it kind of blends with the backboard a little bit better i think so now me and my daughter are kind of crafting here together and we're discussing how we want to introduce the paints over the glitter uh, and the uh, gold flake background on the board. We went ahead and began just slowly incorporating different metallics. We went with purple, uh, magenta, um, a hot pink. We went with uh, gold, all sorts of different colors. And we're really just enjoying the process here. Uh, I just wanted to incorporate this into to the overall process because we did have such a fun time putting this together, uh, introducing just so many uh, different paints in here. And we're just kind of kind of lay these over the glitter uh, and some of the glitter will pop in and um, out in different places. And it really just brings a lot of um, just very fun artisticness to the actual back uh, backboard of the art pieces that we've created. I really do ha enjoy the overall process of painting with my daughter. Uh, and then, of course, we're going to introduce quite a bit of white there. I think the white's going to really break up the monotony of all the pinks and purples. Uh, I think there's a fuchsia in there as well. Now, this is my daughter and me. I'm taking uh, uh, turns here. We're just going to use the end of a stick here just to kind of smooth it out. I didn't want to do a full-on acrylic pour because I wanted to engage my daughter in you know the creation process. And this is just something fun for us to do. So I'll give her the popsicle stick there or the little, uh, I think it's just like a, a, a barbecue skewer that I scavenged from the uh, kitchen. And we're just going to go ahead and blend the colors out, make it nice and swirly, kind of wispy in certain areas. Enjoy the process and just being able to paint together before we move on to the next step. All right, so with that completely finished out there, we went ahead and uh, I let my daughter do the last little bit of it there. And here are all of the colors that we use. Most of, most of those are all folk art paints. I really do like the brand folk art. I really think they have a great uh, diversity of colors and I love their metallics and their shimmering paints. Here's what the actual background looks like now. And we're gonna give that at least a few, uh, probably a three or four days to completely dry out before we go on to any other steps. After this is completely finished up, I will hit this with a clear coat of spray paint. Um, I think I use a two times like Rust-Oleum or something just to give it a nice really thick glaze before we go on to the next stage here. I really do hope y'all enjoyed this part of the video. It's kind of simple, just very fun. And I do believe I created its own individual standalone video of that as well. Here's what it looks like so far. I went ahead and used E6000 to apply our, our uh, casted item there. Um, and make sure you go back at the end of the video here. I will link the playlist and you can watch how I sculpted that. 
you will also be able to see all the videos in the entire playlist. So if you want to kind of uh, incorporate some uh, aspects of this build into something you'd like to, then make sure you do so. And as you can see here, I did uh, uh, cr collect uh, some of the um, the confetti from the gender reveal that we had. Very fun. We got uh, some great photos of the other our other two children, our uh, daughter and son, enjoying in the the burst of confetti from the balloon. So we did a balloon uh, gender reveal for our third daughter, our third child, and our second daughter there. Here I am just kind of thinking about where I'd like to place this. I really didn't know. I know that I wanted to incorporate a little small watercolor painting into this, and I wasn't sure if I wanted that to be up or down. I just don't want to cover too much of that nice, pretty glitter and um, uh, metallic paint background that we made, but covering some of it up is inevitable. Uh, I want to also uh, get rid of that silver lid. I felt like that is just a little bit too bright, too shiny. And what we're going to do is we're going to give it a nice a light sanding here. And then we're actually going to paint that with some bronze folk art paint uh, to uh, uh, kind of mirror or mimic uh, and blend with the sculpture that we've already painted. We want to make sure that that kind of blends in. As you can see, that's really too shiny. Uh, instead of doing a band around the jar and having it attached to the backboard, I decided just to actually glue the the top of the mason jar to the actual bat board and then we're going to screw the mason jar to the lid i know that's kind of a jerry rig uh, jerry rigged and easy way to do it but it kind of works out and you're able to kind of see more of the confetti that way through the bottom of the jar whereas opposed to it being visible only through the sides so here we are i'm going get to get out a little bit of paint here and i do actually do about four or five All right, so we'll just apply those last few layers there and we'll give that a little bit of time to dry before we go ahead and attach it to the actual backboard. Now you can see that the placement of that little mason jar with the confetti is a little bit higher than I had originally anticipated. And I did that just because I was really not wanting to cover much of that glitter and acrylic background. I really thought it was really stunning. It's really great and light and it shimmers so much. And I'm already about to cover that up with the next piece of art we're gonna create for this project here. I'm really glad I was able to incorporate so many di different types of art and mediums into just such a, a singular project. Uh, of course, this was all centered around the ultrasound of my uh, third child uh, and just being able to create just a, a such a wide variety of art for the same reference is, is very fun. And I really did push myself into other mediums to create this. Now, as you can see here, I did go ahead and create the watercolor of my daughter's ultrasound. Now, that is a separate standalone video. Make sure you go back at the end of this video in the playlist if you'd like to see that in its entirety. Uh, it is an absolute blast to be able to paint this. It was a very fun process, and I did use my plain air watercolor painting uh, set to make that. I have recently actually got a separate painting palette to do more watercolors here in the studio. Uh, so hopefully here soon you will see actually quite a bit of watercolors coming out of the studio. Now, I had originally bought a frame to include here on the backboard, and it was just way too bulky, way too big. So instead, I bought a acid-free bag here, and I kind of sized and folded that down, flattened it out with some clay for a few days, and we got a really nice flat bag here. And then I went ahead and attached that with double-sided sticky tape to the actual backboard. If I ever want to remove that, then I can easily do so. Uh, and I also uh, trimmed down and included a nice little picture frame there. I had got that out from Hobby Lobby. Of course, I did have to trim it down just so that I didn't uh, cascade over the edges of the board. And I kind of got it to the size that we needed. That is not a uh, three by four uh, uh, painting um, uh, cold roll sheet there. Um, for the watercolor, it is actually shrunk down quite a bit. Uh, moving forward, I'll just kind of go out of my way to make sure that I'm just doing a nice, easy uh, size of watercolors where I don't have to trim it down so much. What we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and include just some simple hardware here and some hanging wire. Uh, of course, you just got to make sure that you incorporate that into your videos if you do any kind of content creation. Just kind of a reminder, hey, these are hangable pieces. And of course, you can kind of set it up on a, uh, on a table if you wanted to or lean it up somewhere. But it's meant and designed to be hung. Now, here we are in its entirety. We got the awesome stained board with the acrylic and the glitter background. We have uh, the gold leaf kind of cascading over to the wood bark on both sides, uh, top and bottom. 
We also have the, the watercolor there. We have the confetti from the ultrasound and gender reveal. We also have an amazing 3D sculpted ultrasound from Monster Clay casted with Smooth on a Moldstar 15 Slow and casted with uh, um, some plaster of Paris. Coming across the screen now is the link to the playlist for all of the full length content, including the watercolor painting and the sculpting videos. Uh, some of those were done on uh, YouTube Live and in time lapse. Leave in the comments what was your favorite part of this overall build. I will catch you guys on the next awesome project. Later. Later.